Several students at Georgetown College face charges after police say a 16-year-old was found drunk. Sheriff's deputies in Round County say they gave a man charged with animal cruelty a chance to turn himself in. Now that he hasn't, they're hoping the public can tell them where he is. My friend was like right beside me, and when it did, she was up in the air and fell like right on top of me. How a Knox County student helped her fellow classmates after their bus flipped on the way to school this morning. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 6. Good evening on this Friday. A ride to school taking a frightening turn for some children in Knox County this morning. Firefighters on the scene tell us a school bus rolled over on Big Beach Branch Road. That's off of Kentucky 223 near DeWitt. Several children on the bus were treated for minor injuries. WKYT's Phil Pendleton talked to one student who helped her classmates during those terrifying moments. He has our top story at 6. Big Beach Branch Road is a narrow gravel roadway in Knox County. Going down the road and the bus just like flipped over the hill. Allison Swafford was one of several middle school aged children on the bus. Her friend Hannah was another one. Because my friend was like right beside me and when it did, she was up in the air and fell like right on top of me. Relatives took this picture of Hannah and sent it from the hospital. We're told she's okay now. Other children were treated for cuts and bruises. All the firemen that was here was extremely nervous. Uh, sheriff's deputy seemed to be, you know, pretty upset and nervous. You know, not upset, but just nervous in general dealing with kids. You know, school officials say several parents chose to drive their children to the hospital for observation. All have since been released. Officials say moisture may have caused the roadway to give way. It appears to be that the road had, uh, broke off with the bus. Very narrow, small gravel road, one lane. Uh, looks like in the curve up there that uh, the road just kind of did break off. Driver's over a little too close, and it did break off the edge. Parents tell us their children usually ride a much smaller bus, but a larger one was used today. In Knox County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. A school official say the driver was very experienced and helped the children get to a nearby house after that crash. Tonight, we're learning more about the victim in Lexington's latest homicide. The Fayette County coroner has identified the victim as 30 year old Joseph Ramon Parker. Police say someone shot Parker yesterday morning on Augusta Court. Police have issued an arrest warrant for Javon McGee in connection with that shooting. He's being charged with murder. Well, tonight we have new surveillance video of the suspect. Police say stole a car last night with a baby inside. It triggered an amber alert, but the baby was found safe. WKYT's Garrett Weimer was there as the mother was reunited with her baby. He's at the live desk with the latest on the investigation. Garrett, a lot of people interested that in what happened. That new surveillance video gives us a better timeline of just what happened and when. Timestamps on the video telling police it was just about 11 minutes from the time the car with 20 day old Henry Flores inside was stolen to when the suspect abandoned it just over eight miles away. I'm counting on one. I'm at the speedway here at 7819, and uh, there's a, a, a young woman, um, Hispanic, here, and she said her car was just stolen and her baby is in the car. That was the 911 call just minutes after the man drove off from the speedway on US 42 in Florence. Today, police released new surveillance footage from the Marathon Station on Dixie Highway, where the car and baby were found. Watch the top left corner in this surveillance video as the car pulls into the lot. You'll see several moments later that the suspect gets out and walks away. Police say the timestamp is about 15 minutes fast and that all this happened at about 4.16 p.m. It was about three hours later that two women spotted the car with the baby inside sleeping. Police say they're now processing the car, reviewing surveillance videos, and interviewing witnesses, but right now they have not identified who that man is they believe stole the car. At the live desk, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Police in Florence tell us whether the mother will face any charges will be decided later as the investigation continues. Well, it's a story we've been telling you about for the last week. A dog left starving and abandoned in Rowan County. Now the dog's owner faces multiple charges. Police say Ricky G. left his two Dobermans chained to a pole 
One of those later died. As Victor Puente tells us, police are trying to track down G. Last week, this Doberman, Lola, was found behind the Round County home of Ricky G, chained to a pole. A tip led animal control to the home on US 60 where they found her and the body of her young puppy. While I was shooting video at the home, G and another man walked up to me and told me the dogs had food but wouldn't gain weight. Police didn't believe that story and have charged G with two counts of second degree animal cruelty, a class A misdemeanor. We just do the best we can with the law that's there. You know, we, we work within the law and, and uh, we try to charge the, the maximum that we can. Chief Deputy Klein tells me they made contact with a family member of G's to give him an opportunity to turn himself in. But now that he hasn't, they're hoping the public can tell them where he is. It doesn't mean that we haven't uh, went up and knocked on their door or tried to, tried to locate them in the meantime. But uh, what that does, it's, it just sends the offer out there to uh, turn yourself in. G does face a felony charge. That's from an existing warrant for theft by unlawful taking. As for Lola, the woman in charge of fostering her tells me she's beginning to gain muscle back and is having an easier time walking, although her ribs are still very visible. In Rowan County, Victor Puente, WKYT. Glad to know she's doing better. The penalty for cruelty to animals is up to 90 days in jail. A group of Georgetown College students faced charges tonight after police say they got a 16 year old drunk. It happened over the weekend. Police tell us the teenager was found unconscious and covered in vomit at a fraternity house. WKYT's Jarek Insko talked to police about the charges. It all happened here on Georgetown College's campus inside of a dorm over the weekend. Now five of the college's students are charged after police say they got a 16-year-old drunk. 18-year-old Shandy Wilson, 18-year-old Austin Keen, 19-year-old Austin Snyder, 18-year-old Natalie Fiepke, and 19-year-old Grant Carr were all charged with second-degree wanton endangerment and third-degree unlawful transaction with a minor. Everyone involved is underage for drinking alcohol, so the 16-year-old's legal limit is zero, but the juvenile's blood alcohol level was at .195, which is three times the legal limit for an adult, according to Georgetown police. After one of the college students helped the 16-year-old drink a fifth of whiskey, police say the teen was found passed out and covered in vomit at a fraternity house. Once EMTs arrived, they used smelling salts to help the teen regain consciousness. This could, this could have went south really fast for, for this juvenile uh, due to his highly and high intoxication levels. If we weren't there, you know, on you know, at the when we did respond, when we did get there, it probably, it probably could have turned really bad for him. Now, police tell me that a third party called 911 after the intoxicated teen arrived at a fraternity house after leaving a dorm where the drinking occurred. In Georgetown, Jerrica Insko, WKYT. Records from the jail show the five Georgetown College students were released from the Scott County Detention Center on a $2,000 bond on Sunday. They were in court to answer to the charges on Tuesday. It's going to be a cold weekend, and we may even see some snow flurries out there tomorrow. But the bigger question for many people, Barbara, will we have a white Christmas? A lot of people <laughs> keep asking. Meteorologist Jim Caldwell is tracking some snow chances for next week. Jim? Yeah, it's a big time system, guys, and will likely bring us at least some very light accumulations right around Christmas, which would mean white Christmas is looking pretty good at this point. Out there right now, we're just dealing with the chill in the air. Temperatures running in the 20s here in Lexington. We're all the way down to 27 degrees. You compare that to Frankfurt at 31 or even Richmond at 32. We're almost in a completely different world with some of those folks. And you really are if you just look down the road to London. 36 degrees there. All of us end up at or below freezing during the overnight hours. Mainly looking at 20s, it looks like. Defender has been pretty calm throughout the day today. We're not tracking any rain or any snow. The satellite has been busy tracking cloud cover throughout the entire area. Now, we might see a little clearing from time to time as the actually the clouds have thinned out quite a bit compared to what they were earlier today. We look ahead with our three day threat track and we're tracking those flakes of snow again tomorrow. Maybe even some very light accumulations, especially showing up in southern and eastern parts of Kentucky. Enjoy the Sunday because it's going to be our last dry one for a while because we're either talking about rain, as you see on Monday, or we start talking those snow chances once we get into next week. And we'll take a closer look at that system coming up for you here in just a few minutes.
A man accused of killing a Lexington teenager was in court today for his punishment. Police say that Ernest Wheeler shot 18 year old Patrick Puckett at an apartment on Ryan Circle last year. Wheeler was originally charged with murder in this case, but under a plea deal, he pled guilty to manslaughter. This afternoon, a judge sentenced Wheeler to 12 years in prison. Friends say the sentence is one they'll have to learn to live with. So, this is something that, I, that it doesn't have to linger on anymore because yeah, he's, he's dear to me. I keep him close to me always, and I even got him tattooed on my arm. So, he was, he was, he was a big part of my life, and you know, he was honestly like a brother to me. Final sentencing included a restitution amount of more than $15,000. The restitution hearing is scheduled for February 12th. Well, it's an investigation that began nearly a year ago. A Moorhead clothing store shelves are empty tonight after sheriff's deputies seized thousands of items. Investigators in Rowan County say the items were all counterfeit. The store, name brand closeouts, sold big label items such as Michael Kors, Coach, and North Face. But the sheriff's office says those items are fake. Police say the owners, Jamie and George Skaggs, could face penalties. A Lexington father is rushing to find gifts for his children after a burglar broke into their home and stole all their presents. Police say a burglar broke into a home on West 7th Street late last night. We're told that person stole hundreds of dollars worth of items, including electronics and clothes. Germanta Sturgis says he only has six days to replace all of his children's gifts. I had an Xbox 360 ready for him. I had five brand new outfits apiece for him. I had three brand new pairs of shoes for him and some miscellaneous toys. Police tell us they're still trying to track down witnesses. Still to come at 6, we have an update for you about the Centerpoint project in downtown Lexington. We'll tell you more about the next steps in construction. We have an update tonight on the Centerpoint project in downtown Lexington. Construction started on Monday, and tonight we're learning that both large tower cranes are up and running, standing about 25 stories. Developer Dudley Webb says the smaller cranes were removed this morning. Over the next two to three weeks, crews will install plumbing and electric, then put in gravel and concrete on top of that. Well, it's a victory for the coal industry from the Obama administration. For the first time, there's a national standard for how to deal with coal ash. It's the waste from coal fired power plants like the Dale Station Power Plant in Clark County. The rule issued Friday ends a six year effort that began after a massive spill at a power plant flooded a Tennessee town. Like the coal industry wanted, the new regulation will treat coal ash like household gar garbage rather than hazardous material. Clark County's Dale Station power plant is set to be deactivated next year. This morning, the governor and first lady played the role of Mr. and Mrs. Claus handing out gifts at Kentucky Children's Hospital. The Bashirs went up and down the halls handing out dozens of presents to sick children. Mackenzie Stewart got her gift an hour before going into gallbladder surgery. Mackenzie said that she was nervous about the surgery, but the unexpected gift calmed her nerves. It gives me something to think about besides my surgery. And what do you think about your gift? I think it's pretty cool. Oh, we hope she did well. Mackenzie received a jewelry box she can decorate when she gets out of surgery.